Hello and good morning. Welcome to our partners, to our mentors, the startups, our community members, and everyone joining in this morning from Doha and around the world. My name is Hebal Masri, and I'd like to welcome you to Qatar Sports Tech's fourth cohorts demo day. Today, we celebrate the graduation of 10 amazing startups from some of the world's most innovative technology. From NFTs to blockchain ticketing, from talent identification to stretchable technology, at this demo day, you're gonna see it all. Spanning across eight different countries and shortlisted from 3,000 startups, this cohort has collectively raised over $3 million in funding and hold eight patents and awards. With over 140 collaborations with some of the world's most major organizations, in today's pitches, you will see why Manchester City, FIFA Medical Center, the Port Portuguese Football Federation, and others are working with our startups. But first, with us this morning to give us the welcome address, I'd like to introduce you to one of the leaders in building Qatar's entrepreneurship ecosystem, the Executive Director of Advisory and Incubation at Qatar Development Bank, Mr. Ibrahim al Manahi. Assalamu alaikum everyone and good morning. Uh, I'm really happy to join you today in, uh, in our celebration of, of the fourth cohort of uh, Qatar Sportech. Uh, I would like to welcome everyone and, and uh, warm welcome to our partners, our community uh, supporters, our uh, entrepreneurs, and uh, wishing them all, all the best of luck in their, in their demo day. We've achieved really great great uh, you know uh, achievement since since we started Qatar sport tech uh, we are very proud in the qdb and, and diversifying the economy with with Qatar sports tech and and all the innovative ideas that they bring to 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 Qatar uh, wishing everyone all the best and wishing everyone to to continue their development and to see Qatar as a hub of, of, of opportunities thank you so much Thank you, Mr. Ibrahim. Doha is definitely an opportunity that we should all try to achieve from sports technology to everything else. Um, if you haven't been here and visited, I advise that you do. And this is a great country and it's doing amazing things. But let's get started and let's get today's agenda. So we'll have a quick look into Qatar Sports Tech, a very short video to just show you our highlights and some of the things that we've achieved in the past four cohorts. Then we'll go straight into the pitches for five minutes each. So each startup will pitch for five minutes and we will send out a poll that will have two questions. The first question will ask you to rate the startup and the second one will ask if you are interested in meeting with the startup. This is a chance for you to introduce them to somebody you may know or to mentor them or if you're an investor, if you have a potential of investing in them. We will also send a Calendly link to the bottom of the screen in the chat box. This Calendly link will take you directly to the startup's calendar, calendar, and this is where you can further book a, a meeting immediately. And finally, we have some engaging quiz for today, so stay tuned and get involved. We will announce the winner of the quiz at the end of the show on our social media platforms. Then we will have the winner for the mentor challenge. So we, this, for this cohort, we have had over 40 very active mentors that have volunteered their time and energy every week to, for our startups. But there's one mentor that stuck out the most and invested most of their time. Stay tuned and find out who it is. Finally, we'll have our closing remarks from Sheikh Ahmed Al Thani for us to close off the day. So let's get started. Sit back and enjoy this video.
So that was just a quick look into what we've done in the past. Uh, if you'd like to learn more, please visit us at cutsersportstick.com and you can meet all of our startups from every cohort. And now to tell you a little bit briefly about QST. So QST is a QDB accelerator program and we have the following strategic partners. I'd like to take this minute to thank all of them, each one individually for their support as we would not be as successful without them. The Supreme Committee for Delivery and Legacy, Qatar Stars League, BN Media Group, MBK Holding, Qatar Financial Center, Aspire Zone, and the Ministry of Commerce and Industry. Thank you once again. We really appreciate your time, your efforts, your mentorship, and all that you do. And now let's get started. Are you ready to meet our startups? First off, we have Sentio Sports, a real-time player tracking technology that provides sports clubs the insights about the game to enrich the live broadcaster for better engagement with fans, Sentio Sports. Next, we'll have allow, uh, Juego Football that allows footballers to track their performance in the football matches by playing locally and enabling them to be scouted globally. NavBuddy, an indoor navigation solution that helps users to seamlessly navigate to various points of interest inside stadiums and other venues. Stretch skin, stretchable technology sensors that are embedded inside soft polymers, which can be placed at any of the human joints to measure motion and force. NSA Tech, an artificial intelligence and deep learning analysis of athletes' techniques, skeleton, reaction times, muscle use, and much more. AI Abacus, a SaaS platform to search, select, benchmark, and simulate players' recruitment suitability. Stable Innovations, the world's first fully automated vital feedback solution, enabling the users to proactive to determine outcomes and performance of health to the horses. B-Box Sports, bringing you AR experience like photos of players, 360 degree stadium tours and infographics about players' performance. Come Together, giving event organizers control of their entire ticket life cycle with the power of blockchain. and field of vision, a touch base handheld device that allows visually impaired users to feel the action of the game in real time. So let's first give our first, our, our first welcome to field of vision, David Denner from Ireland. Good morning, everyone. I hope you're having a good morning. So I'm David and I'm a co-founder at field of vision. And to begin, I'd like to ask everyone watching to close their eyes and listen to the commentary. This is how 100 million visually impaired football fans worldwide experience live sports. Audio descriptive headsets are becoming more common in stadiums across Europe. But after speaking with vision impaired fans, we learned that commentary, no matter how detailed, struggles to capture the intensity and the excitement of a live game. But this is a viral video that inspired our journey. It is one of many videos of a man bringing his son to a game and tracing the position of a ball on a small board. But not everyone has a friend as great as this. This is why we started Field of Vision. We have built a device for the people who don't have anyone to do this for them. We use artificial intelligence and computer vision to extract all the important information from the game in real time using the camera feeds. We feed this information back to our device, which moves a magnetic finger piece on the top of it, mirroring the exact movements of the ball across the pitch. Both the cameras and the handheld devices are based on a low bandwidth IoT network. The blind person holds their devices and places their palm on it. Several motors vibrate to communicate which team has possession and when shots, hassles, and tackles occur, filling in the gaps left by audio descriptive commentary. For the first time, users of our product will be able to feel the swerve on a free kick and the power of a shot. 
Visually impaired people take up a perhaps surprisingly large portion of football fans, with there being over 800,000 in the UK alone. For a stadium of 40,000 capacity, such as the Emirates, there are 90 visually impaired fans, with 43% of visually impaired people being sports fans. At full launch, we will have two revenue streams, the first of which is direct product sales to clubs. Our match visualization devices will be sold with a relatively low profit margin to capture customers. We will then be charging an annual subscription for our artificial intelligence match delivery software at a much higher profit margin. This cost will be based on the capacity of the stadium. Clubs and event organizers are continuously looking for the next big innovation to make the games accessible to their entire fan base. We deliver this to them. There's also strong marketing and PR potential for the club using our product. We have raised money through many accelerators and competitions, including Launchbox, Engineers Ireland, and Pioneer. We have a fully manufactured MVP with a company computer vision model and companion app. We recently started a pilot program with one of the largest football clubs in Ireland, and we'll begin testing our device there this summer. Several Premier League clubs and the Irish national team have shown considerable interest in purchasing our technology after the pilot. After our success in Bohemians this summer, we will begin our first paid games in the Premier League in time for the 2021 season. This is to prepare for our short-term goal of the international tournaments here in Qatar. After this, we will be expanding into other sports and releasing a consumer product for use by millions at home. There are a few companies backed by big names such as Santander working on similar solutions. But they have no AI-powered computer vision model meaning they can't scale and cover hundreds of live matches playing simultaneously worldwide. We're also the only product that is fully wireless and portable. To get us fully in our way, we need $250,000 in seed investments. This will cover the further development of the MVP into a scalable product, complete the pilots, and capture our first 50 customers. We also want to expand our team in important areas of expertise. Speaking of our team, we as a co-founding team are lifelong school friends and we have years of experience working together on projects. Tim is our computer vision genius, I'm the coder and designer, and Omar is the engineer and the CEO. With our degrees in computer science, business, and engineering, along with our close friendship, we're confident that we can deliver a product to make a positive impact for the sporting world. Stadiums who use our technology will be leaders in innovation for inclusivity and they'll be fully opening up the game to a whole group that has not previously experienced it. We love to watch sports, and we struggle to imagine a life without watching our favourite team play. This drives us in our mission to share it with those who can't, the same way fathers across the globe do with their blind sons. If you want to help us in our mission, please get in touch for a further meeting. Thank you. Thank you, David. Well done. It is definitely a project for the better good. So now we're going to send the poll for everybody. All the attendees will have the chance to rate this, the pitch as well as determine if you have uh, any kind of connection that you want to make for them or if you want to meet with them yourselves. So we'll give the poll 30 seconds. We have also pasted the Calendly link in the chat box. So if you want to meet with them directly, click on that link and book a meeting. All right, and now we will send out the first question for our quiz. Question number one, approximately how much was invested in the sports tech industry in Asia in 2019? Choose your answers and I'll let you know the, the correct answer at the end. So 49% of our attendees got it right. The correct answer is 1 billion US dollars. Well done. 
Next up, our, ne our next pitch will be with Come Together. Come with us, with us today is Lozados from Greece. Good morning, everyone. Um, I'm Lazarus, CEO of Come Together. We give control of the entire ticket lifecycle to event organizers with the power of blockchain. Let me tell you about the big problem in the events industry at the moment. It is being cannibalized by ticket scalpers and fraud. They use ticket bots to buy tickets the moment they go on sale, only to resell them later at much higher prices, ultimately leading to lost revenue for organizers. And even worse, some funds are denied access to events because they were sold fake or already scanned tickets. The root of these problems is static QR code tickets. Come Together introduces a new form of digital ticket. Firstly, it's based on blockchain, and second, we de developed innovative ticket delivery through a dynamic QR code that changes every 30 seconds. This gives control and tracking of ticket resales to event organizers. The benefits are organizers provide better fun experience as ticket fraud and scalping are eliminated. They access secondary market revenues. They get better audience insights, knowing who the attendee is, even if the ticket exchanges hands. For targeted marketing, COVID-19 tracing, and compliance with regulations. Since 2019, our tickets are NFTs, which some of you have, may have been hearing a lot about recently. In the context of live events, they can provide a massive new revenue stream, as tickets can be resold even after the event as digital collectibles, bundled with memories from the event. This gives an extra incentive for fans to attend an event and geographically expands a live event's addressable market worldwide. This is our product. We are technology providers for event organizers and ticketing companies to sell tickets under their own branding. It has three layers, a Neos IO blockchain, network, a cloud API, and white label ticketing tools. The tools provide an end-to-end plug-and-play ticketing solution that includes a primary and secondary ticket marketplace, a ticket wallet, and an organizer's dashboard. Event tickets worldwide was 73 billion in 2019, with an additional 15 billion from secondary resales, currently an untapped market for event organizers. But as Mike Tyson said, everyone has a plan until they get a punch in the mouth. And that's what COVID-19 was for most, especially those of us in the live events industry. However, we developed back together a COVID-19 certificate providing COVID-19 test, antibody test, and vaccination status using our blockchain technology as foundation. Back together has Android and iOS apps, interoperability in compliance with the new EU Digital Green Certificate Regulation, and won three hackathons, including the official Greek government one. What this means for event organizers is that they can validate the COVID-19 status of funds upon entrance, enabling safe restart of live events. Our business model is licensing, and we will also monetize the blockchain network by issuing its own native token, which will allow for it to be used in a decentralized fashion. As you can see, Come Together combines a unique set of benefits previously mentioned, while most of our competitors are also missing the power of open ecosystems built on public blockchains, which Come Together utilizes. Come Together launched in October 2019 providing ticketing to 14 live events during the first five months. Customers include the most popular hip hop label in Greece and a UK ticketing company. For Back Together, we have a contract with a Greek healthcare company. We are in incubation with a global leader in intellectual music property software and have business development partnerships. We are presenting at the biggest industry events and are leading an events restart initiative in Greece with some of the biggest event organizers. Now we are in the ideal position to penetrate the sports industry through our acceleration in QST. 
We are a team with deep blockchain software, business, marketing, and events industry expertise. As live event enthusiasts, we have had frustrating experiences with ticket scalping, so we take this problem personally. Fundraising so far is 500,000 euros. We are looking for an additional 500 to grow our team, provide 20 months of runway, and lead to profitability. Let's ensure the best fun experience together. I invite you to have a further conversation. Thank you. Thank you, Lozados. The COVID-19 passport, bringing that into the sports sector now is definitely a much needed solution. We're very glad to have you. All right, so now we'll send off the two questions and I'll give you 30 seconds to answer. All right, thank you to those who've replied. And now let's look at question number two for our quiz. Which North American city accounted for 45% of total funding in 2019 for sports tech? I'll give you another 30 seconds. Okay, so we, it's not surprising that 53% of you think it's San Francisco, given the area and Silicon Valley and all the innovation that comes out of there, but actually it's out of New York. So New York City is one of, it is the world's largest city for sports tech investments. Um, I tell you to read down some articles and a lot of these reports, um, and you'll find that that's the case by far in the amount of funding. So very surprising, um, but good note to take. All right, so our next startup, we have the Chief Marketing Officer, Dos Guarda from our B-Box. Hello, good morning, everyone. Okay, so let's do this. Hello, my name is Dulce and I'm the CMO of Freebox Sports. And I'm here to talk to you about sports fan engagement. So did you know that almost $2 billion per match are generated only from revenues such as hospitality and earned tickets? Or that more than 60% of fans say that a all year round experience would make them more engaged with the team in the next year? Or that even 90% of fans have some kind of form of interaction with their team after the season ends? So these numbers are pretty impressive. But let's not ignore the elephant in the room. 2020 has happened. And one thing that it showed us is that sports teams need to start to look at fans as one of their main assets, because sometimes things get out of control. And let's face it, fans engagement, fans data, fans monetization, and even sponsors involvement need some kind of improvement inside sports teams departments. That's why Bbox created an engagement tool that offers real data about real fans. Through an app, we capture different data, allowing sports teams to know their fans and engage with them in a whole new level. But how do we capture this data? After all, people won't give their data for free anymore, unless they get something in return, like true experiences, sharing moments, and feeling exclusive. Oh, and don't worry, all of this can be integrated into another app, into the club's app, with a simple SDK. So we created this patent collectible item, the LEDs, which are like bubble heads on steroids that connects the fan with augmented reality content created by us. So experiences like the tour of stadiums, taking photos with, or videos with players, even involving sponsors into AR campaigns, are experiences that we have at this moment working with our clients. 
But our solution does not end with data. We are also generating new revenue streams for sports teams. During the last month, we have been working on the digital collectibles, the famous NFTs. But what are they? So this is the next generation of the old football card embedded with AR content. So here there are no copies. Each and every single one of them is one of a kind. They are digital player cards that you can buy, collect, sell and trade while their values continue to grow along the way. Our business model has two different sides. The B2C, where we sell directly to the fans, the physical and the digital collectible using online and retailer stores. And then the B2B, where we work a SaaS model so that sports teams can have access to a platform where we are gathering and analyzing all the data that we are collecting from fans when using our AR experiences in order to help them monetize their fans in an efficient way. Overall, it's important to understand that our tool is moldable for different areas, from fun engagement to merchandising, but also corporate, hospitality, or even sponsors. What about the market size? 2.4 billion users next year, 340 billion in revenue by 2028. With 4 billion sports funds worldwide, I think it's safe to say that this market has some potential. When it comes to our competitors, we have on one hand the licensing companies that work merchandising models and areas, and on the other hand we have AR studios that build projects on demand. What Bbox is doing is blending the digital with the physical world, creating value for both sports teams and fans. SLB FICA was our first customer and now we are working with Sporting Club Portugal and the Portuguese national team and more recently with River Plate in Argentina as we continue to negotiate with other teams and sports teams around the world. What they have been saying about us is they have found in Bbox a promising solution that integrates both the fans and the sponsors, but also because AR is the next big thing that everyone is trying to get in. And of course, none of this would be possible unless we had an amazing team in-house in strategic areas from design, marketing, AR, and business development. So far, we have raised 750k euros that allow us to start our project with our first three clubs and to set up the core team. And now we are closing a round of 7.5 million euros that will lead us to the top three strategic clubs around the world, focus on the next world competitions and grow the team. So what are we looking for? Simple, sports clients, strategic partners, and the opportunities to do business with QST partners so we can meet our goals. Thank you for your time. And if you are curious to know more about how can we prove fun engagement through augmented reality, please feel free to book a time with us and I'm happy to talk to you further. Thank you, Shukram. Well done, Dose. Thank you very much. And the calendar link for Bbox will be in the chat box right now. Uh, bringing, you know, NFTs and AR, VR is definitely the hottest thing in technology right now. So I advise you to reach out and book a meeting. Uh, I will send the poll out now and give you some seconds to fill it out. <laughs> All right, and now let's go to question number three of our quiz. Which Asian country accounted for 86% of total investments in sports tech over a five year period? So 47% of the audience got it right. And the correct answer is China. China is rapidly growing in this sector. 
All right, so the next startup pitching, we have Brandon Laurie from the UK for Stable Innovations. Good morning, Hi. everyone. Hello, everyone. I'm Brandon, co-founder of Stable Innovations. And today I'm going to talk to you about the very lucrative horse racing industry. These are racehorses, arguably one of the fastest animals in the world, a record holder at that. But not only fast, expensive. Some worth more than Ronaldo and Messi combined. Yet value is too difficult to predict due to a big problem, and that is the lack of data. Finding your next superstar is the aim and dream of every owner and trainer, but it is too difficult to predict. The trainer doesn't have the data to know if their horse will be a winner, and the owner doesn't have the data to know how much their horse is worth. The world is becoming more and more data-driven, and yet the world of horse racing is moving further and further behind, except for the world's top readers. They win races time after time, and the reason is not a well-kept secret. Those that succeed use what data they have to drive their decisions. And this brings me to the potential, a market hidden in plain sight. The reach of this problem is truly global and it's standing $300 billion. And we at Stable Innovations have solved this global problem. And let me introduce Hoofit. We combine 75 years of research and our team skill set, and we give two key pieces of analysis every owner, buyer, breeder, and trainer wants. The first, what the animal is worth and we call this a public estimated value. And the second is the health and fitness of the animal. And we identify this using a sophisticated series of algorithms. And when combined, this is very powerful data that can be the difference between the right buy or sell decision and a win or a loss on the racetrack. You might ask why this matters. Well, the answer is simple. Data is the difference between winning and losing. Our product is patent ready, including 16 state-of-the-art algorithms. Hoofit can show you how much your horse is worth without the need for an external agent, saving thousands per year. And it will even show you the health and fitness of the animal by providing a gamified scoring system, including providing improvements and feedback to make adjustments to allow more wins on the racetrack. There are current companies operating in this space in their regional countries. However, none of them provide useful data to empower their users. The wearable companies only provide raw uninterpretable data. The sales companies only operate seasonally and the data companies don't monetize what they have. We are the only company in the world operating at this level in this data space. And that's why we have gained such strong traction. With the many interactions we've had with many stables, our passion for horse related data is infectious. And we are glad to already have partnerships with the global provider to horse racing, Weatherbees, along with real time data provider, Timeform. And we also have three Irish stables as proven customers with additional support coming in every day. And we make money in three different ways. First, a B2C platform, firstly targeting the owners of the 24,000 UK and Irish horses through a software subscription costed at 50 pounds per month per horse. Second is data sales of horse valuations on a call per call basis cost at 20 pounds each. And the third is our API data sales into entertainment, media and esports. So by 2030, we will be a 50 million pound company and we will be the go-to for data analytics and we will be the first choice for entertainment and media companies as their data source. By 2030, 100,000 horses will be on our platform. And by 2030, our algorithms are predicting future potential. So far, we've raised almost 190,000 pounds in non-equity funding along, along with almost 100,000 pounds in angel investment. And we asked for 1.4 million in seed funding across five key areas to get us to our milestones. And these include closing, closing out remaining software development, onboarding 1,000 1, horses to our platform in the UK, Irish and MENA markets, which will generate £600,000 in software subscription revenue annually. And lastly, so excited to introduce our passionate and innovative founding team. We are highly experienced with a combination of skills across business, industry, engineering and software. And we have the energy and focus of over 1,000 horsepower, which will allow stable innovations to champion growth and steer the industry to a new level. So let me leave you on these thoughts. The horse racing industry has been largely static in 250 years. From being directly involved in a long time, we have noticed the passion and love for these animals, but we have also noticed the industry hasn't moved forward. 
we have a prime opportunity to modernize and transform an historic industry and bring it to the new age. Everybody out there might understand data and wearables. We understand the horse. So please get in touch if you want to demo or to hear more and join us on our journey as we transform the centuries old into the brand new. Thank you. Thank you, Brandon. Well done. It's definitely the right solution for the region. So now we'll send out the poll and I'll leave you to answer. All right, thank you to those who have replied. We will go into now our quiz for our fourth question. Which Middle Eastern country has the only world-renowned sports accelerator? This one was an easy one. Let's get 100% on this one. So we didn't get the 100, we got 94%, but that only tells me that 6% of our audience are in the UAE. So welcome and thank you for joining us. And I want to also mention that if you are on our social media platforms and you'd like to get involved, uh, please get on the Zoom link that's been pasted uh, in YouTube, LinkedIn, as well as Instagram. All right, let's go on to our next pitch. Pitching for AI Abacus, the CEO, Ram McMonovan. Hello, uh, everybody. Good morning to you and welcome to the analytical world of AI Abacus. Thank you very much for joining us this morning. AI Abacus attacks three key areas what that is common to all markets, which is recruiting the right people, developing that talent, and creating them into a peaking, team peaking strategies. And football is no different. And we work primarily in football. In football, we are lucky to have billions of data points. But unfortunately, most of the analysis is based on what happened historically. What we don't understand is what is likely to happen in the future. The advent of AI and neural networks has allowed us to create a predictive paradigm, which is very new to football. So what we have done over the last six years is research and published papers which have been peer reviewed using AI, machine learning and neural networks, which allows you to simulate the suitability of a player from one team and into another team, which enables the teams to have greater assurance in mitigating the financial risk of transfers. This also allows players to be developed into the right framework for them to improve the quality of the team. We created three potent KPIs. They are performance, value, and suitability. And what this enables you to do is to understand if that performance of that player is going to improve in your team predictive, through predictive analysis and how the value is going to progress and how suitable is this particular player from a chemistry perspective, how he fits in with the other players and how he tactically fits into the team. We created an interactive platform. What this platform allows you to do is to search our data lake of 150,000 players, profile these players and benchmark these players against other players and then simulate their players suitability into your team. The market is huge. If you take the three key areas we are currently working in, Europe, MENA, and Latin America, and if you take 30% of those teams, the annual recurring revenue is about 160 million US dollars. This is our target audience. We predominantly are in football, 
but we've also had interest from football agents who represent players and also media who want to talk a lot about football, but want to apply analytics to talk about it. We launched our products in December 2020. And over the last five months, we've created great traction. We have some hundred people using this particular product at this particular moment at various clubs, all the way from the number one club in the world to a club that's in the fifth tier of the English uh, division. And also we've got federations such as the German Football Federation, the Mexican Federation and the Ecuadorian Federation who are working with us. And we are currently discussing the working with the Qatar Federation and QSL. The investment that we are seeking is about a million dollars. Up to now, we raised about $600,000 from founders, angels and a VC investment. And this is how that million dollars would be applied in developing the product and taking us through to break even in 22 months. Our business model is quite straightforward. It's a SaaS business model. We have an entry level price, which is affordable for most teams at $750 a month, going up to $5,000 a month for bespoke solutions. Larger clubs want bespoke solutions and we provide those bespoke solutions. Our, our team consists of people that you see there. Collectively, we have over 100 years of experience in sports data. I myself was involved in creating the first image recognition data collection system called Prozone about 20 years ago. What we have now added is a team of analysts who specialize in AI and neural networks. Professor Gopal Ramchun and his team provide all the algorithm that we need to drive this. We then need to convert that analytical framework into a software system. And the guys here convert it into software system and create the marketing expert that allows us to go into the marketplace. So as a summary, we have researched and published peer reviewed papers using AI and neural networks and created that into algorithms that are usable. We have about 40 clients and about 100 users using the particular product with proven traction, and we have an experienced team to deliver it. Thank you very much for listening and looking forward to hearing from you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Ram. So much innovation in one platform. It's definitely a winner. All right, so we're going to send out the poll and please take a few seconds and reply. Okay, now question number five for the quiz. I'm not seeing it. Yep, there it is. How much did Qatar Development Bank invest in the Qatari entrepreneurial ecosystem in 2019? 30 seconds. Okay, so the majority of you still know that 49% of you know that it is 60 million US dollars. So if you're in the region and if you're from Doha, you know the effort and time and all the initiatives that Qatar Development Bank does put together out of here. So thank you once again, because this is something that is really amazing in all sectors of sports tech, fintech, 
fashion tech um, cultural development bank is really leading the way here in Doha. Let's go into our next pitch. From NSA Tech, we have Masih. Good morning, everybody. I hope everybody is doing great. I'm Masih, PR responsible of NSA Tech, which is a sport interactive AI multi platform. This is our founder, Hussein, who is a professional tennis coach and has a PhD in exercise physiology. He likes to use technology in sport. When Hussein and his fellow coaches were asked for progress data of their players' strength and weaknesses, they had nothing to say. The found academies are always worried about their coaches' performance and if they are training their customers in the right way. According to statistics, Families annually spend more than 54,000 US dollars on tennis. They pay a lot of money, but maybe see no progress. NSA Tech has solved these problems by technology. Coaches can track their players' performance to find strengths and weaknesses, frame by frame movements, and the players' progress. Academies select the right posture and receive data related to effect of coaches' training performance on the player. And families are informed about the player's progress and if the coach is training the right way and have access to a network of great coaches. You can log into NSA Tech multiple platform. Select your favorite sport. Select the right technique of a top level player. Have access to accumulated data. Capture or upload a video of the player. Zoom in or out 360 degrees view by fingers or the mouse. Receive comparison data of the player by graphs and schedules. This is a real example of, of one of our customers. Differences between professional and amateur players can be seen easily. Before training, our coaches receive performance information of the player and plan a training program accordingly. We have a multifaceted market. Just for tennis, we aim to reach 8.7 million amateur and professional tennis player, which is around 10% of the total market. And also we target 1.4 million coaches and 300,000 academies and clubs. We have more than 200 users, including coaches and players, and receive their positive feedback after using our technology. We had two paid users for 500 US dollars just in two weeks. We are negotiating with great coaches and managers of famous academies, such as Sanchez Casual with four branches worldwide. And so far, the best coaches in the world have signed contracts with us to use our technology. Our technology is US patent pending as well. Despite the competition, what is unique about us? Top level players don't need to be physically present. There are no variable tools or special cameras, which means reducing maintenance costs and cooperating with the elite. As you saw previously, our technology provides an interactive 3D platform in 360 degrees view, allowing for observation of joint angles, body posture, and frame by frame movements. And we provide a real analyzing camera, tracking the performance of the coach and the player in any sport. Our business model includes technology licensing for clubs and academies, monthly subscription for coaches and players, and sponsorship and ads. So far, we have bootstrapped 10,000 US dollar and 40,000 stores. Currently, we are looking for 500K to develop our technology, marketing, and team up, and also 1.5 million US dollar for seed investment to add new features such as mm, comparing techniques with more than 297 famous players, technology of watching games, learning by virtual reality, and technology of recognizing involved muscles for injury prevention. We have a really powerful team with extensive expertise across all areas of business and sport. As you can see, the former coach of Rafael Nadal's academy is in our team. Our target is to collaborate with 3,000 users, 50 academies in 12 months, and make 5,000 US dollars monthly from our users. And by licensing academies, we can reach 400,000 US dollars annually. NSA Tech was founded in 2020. We have gone through Microsoft event in Singapore to Qatar. We wish to have Series A by June 2021 and Series B in FIFA and ATP Tour FanGate, which is a great place for fan engagement. Success is simple. Do what is right, 
the right way at the right way. Thank you for your time and attention, and please feel free to join a more complete conversation with our team. We also invite anyone ready to test and develop our technology for other sports. Thank you. Thank you so much, Monsieur. So we will paste the Calendly link below in the chat box. Please reach out to that calendar and book a time for to meet with the NSA team. And now we will send out the poll for your place. All right, so now let's have question number six for the quiz. Approximately how much was invested in the sports tech industry in Asia and the Pacific in the first quarter of 2021? It's in over just three months. All right, so this one was a difficult one. The correct answer is 880 million US dollars, which is still a very nice amount considering that we're in the pandemic. So 41% got it right, well done. Our next startup, we have Autofin from Singapore pitching for stretch skin. Hi everyone, good morning. Hi, I'm Arifin, CEO and co-founder of Stretchkin. We provide smart physical rehabilitation solutions using soft sensors. Currently, most sports therapists struggle with two major problems. Most have data collection issues because they are still using pen and paper to record their patient's progress, thus leading to numerous errors, making it difficult for them to assess their patients effectively. Secondly, most of the solutions out there in the market are still using heart sensors, making it difficult to measure all parts of the body. For me personally, there were two episodes in my life where I required lots of physical rehab. The first was when I was diagnosed with a neuro disease known as Miller-Fisher syndrome. I lost my balance and my ability to walk. Secondly, when I tore my meniscus during a game of soccer. What I found during these rehab sessions were that they were extremely boring. I had to walk back and forth on a straight line and it was just not motivating, which is why it comes to no surprise that most of the patients out there globally are not motivated to complete their treatment. For um, the, the sports rehab market is huge. Um, it is worth billions of dollars and have huge potential. The Southeast Asian market alone is worth $150 million, which is why we have developed Stretchkin and Stretchkin works in two ways. The soft sensors, also known as stretchable electronics, has the ability to detect strain, range of motion, as well as gripping force. The nature of these soft sensors allows the therapist to place them on any parts of the body. We incorporate these soft sensors into wearables so that rehab data can be recorded effectively and objectively without the need of the therapist to eyeball their patients all the time. And we are excited to share that we have filed seven provisional IPs related to the application of these soft sensors. And the second part of the solution is that we have developed a rehab gaming platform so that patients remain engaged and are motivated to complete their treatment. As you can see on the left side of the screen, we have got competitions in three areas from companies that provide soft sensors, sports wearables, as well as rehab gaming platform. On the right of the screen is how we stand out. We provide low cost sensors 
we are focused on rehab variables instead of performance-based variables. And lastly, patients who are not mobile, who are injured and on their beds or on their wheelchair can still enjoy the rehab games. Our business model includes working with distributors to market our solutions to sports club, rehab clinics, as well as hospital. Our second model is to license our soft sensors to other companies to develop their own solution. And we have got great traction. We have got one paid customer for our rehab gaming platform. We have signed five letters of intent from companies in the UK, Singapore, as well as Malaysia. And we have got 20 use cases from rehab homes in Singapore. And no startup is complete without an A team. We have got a combined experience of 75 years uh, in the area of sensors, software, design, and business development. My co-founder, Mayang, has been working on stretchable and flexible electronics for the past seven years. And for me, I've got a PhD in health information where I look at how emotion as well as gamification can influence patients' behavior. Our advisors come from both the academia as well as the industry, and they have been crucial in helping us to develop the product and our solution as well as to form relevant partnerships. We are raising $350,000 to help us in further our product development to acquire new talent as well, of course, to get more customers. And this will also facilitate us to enter into the MENA region. As you can see, Stretchkin is working on a huge problem faced by both the therapists as well as the rehab patients. Come and join us in Making Mobility King. I invite you to a follow-up session after this speech. Thank you for your time and attention. Well done, Arifin. We will paste the Calendly link below. It is always nice to have a your own story and your own pain that drives your passion to develop something such amazing, such as a stretchable electronic. All right, so now we're gonna send the poll. Please take a few seconds. Great, now on to question number seven of the quiz. Which Middle Eastern country is home to the region's first specialized orthopedic and sports medicine hospital? So 92% got it right. It is Qatar. This hospital is called Aspatar. It is impressive in all aspects of the doctors to the facility, to the equipment that's there. Uh, there's athletes from all professional uh, games and sports that come here just to get treated at Aspatar. So with that, let's move on to our next pitch. So pitching for Napoli, CEO Mohammed Al Safar. Hello, everyone. Um, hello, everyone. My name is Safar, and I'm the CEO and co-founder of Napoli, where we are aiming to uh, to elevate and enhance the stadium stadium experiences for fans. A few years ago, I had the opportunity to watch Argentina take on Brazil at the Khalifa International Stadium where I also got to see my favorite player, Messi, play right in front of my own eyes. Towards the end of the exciting game, I had to rush to the washroom, but I got completely lost in the large corridors, and it took me almost 15 minutes to come back, only to find out that Messi had scored the game-winning goal. I was completely disappointed by the fact that I was not able to view the most important moment of the game live. Fans across the world face similar problems that include wasting time, 
and losing track of friends and family, especially young children. And as for the venue management, crowd control and monitoring has never been harder. And in order to compensate for this, they have increased their staff hiring. So Navbody has developed uh, an application that works in two ways. For the end users, we have developed an indoor nav navigation solution that allows them to navigate turn by turn in real time with the ability to view different points of interest. We also allow them to track and view live locations of friends and family. This in turn saves them immense amount of time and relieves them of the frustration. As you can see, it is as simple as scanning the QR code in your ticket and we make sure that you never get lost or miss an important moment of the game. As for the venue management, we have developed a dashboard that allows them to view different real-time analytics, such as the heat maps. We also allow them to run proximity advertisement for the retail facilities, such as the rest restaurants and the concession stands. We reduce the cost, of, cost involved in staff hiring as the app takes on the role of guiding people. Through the dashboard, we, include, we increase the security and monitoring in the facility. Although the stadiums are our primary target market, because the product is so versatile, we can easily expand into malls, resorts, and hospitals. To judge the great potential we have in the market, we can see that the software segment in itself accounts for more than 60% of the smart stadiums market, out of which Navbody aims to acquire a 0.5% market share by the year 2023, which accounts for $25 million in gross revenue. Our revenue model comprises of three major revenue streams that include selling the software as a service, the hardware sales, and the maintenance. Our major competitive advantage stems from the fact that we have a unique networking style that allows, that allows us to have an accuracy of 100, uh, that's 100 times more than GPS and 10 times more than any existing Bluetooth navigation solution. We also have the first to market advantage in Qatar with a strong support from Al Fardan Group. We started our journey by winning the QST Hackathon in 2019 after which we got a consultation session with Mr. Omar al Fardan, who promised his support as we progressed. In 2020, we launched our MVP at a co-working space in al Fardan Center and subsequently joined the pre-accelerator here at Qatar Sports Tech. At the start of 2021, we onboarded MBK Holdings as a strategic investor, and we are happy to announce that we have started our first fully-fledged pilot project for the Hilton Salwa Beach Resort, which is one of the most uh, prominent and upcoming touristic locations here in Qatar, and spans over an area of 300,000 square meters. We're looking to raise 900,000 Qatari riyals, majorly contributing towards the overheads and the pilot project. The rest contributing towards company incorporation and sales and marketing. And we have a runway time of 12 months. When me, I, me, when me and my co-founder started our journey, we wanted to make sure that we build a strong company culture that focuses on valuing each other's effort, transparency, and a flat hierarchy. And this is the reason why we have been able to grow so quickly. We also have an experienced ad, uh, experience advisory board who specialize in strategic communications, business development, strategies, and finance. Navbody was born in the most organic startup ecosystem here in Qatar. And over the past 12 months, we have developed a product that would not only suffice Qatar's needs for the upcoming tournaments, but would compete globally when it comes to indoor navigation. We look, uh, we look forward to continuing our conversation after this. Thank you. Thank you, Mohammed. Navigating through these massive stadiums here is definitely something that we will need. So looking forward to seeing it implemented all throughout Doha. All right, so now we'll send the poll. Please take a few seconds and reply. Okay, so question number seven of the quiz. Sorry, I think it's question number eight, actually. How much is Qatar sports sector expected to be valued in 2023? Three seconds.
So the majority did not get this one right. The correct answer is 20 billion US dollars based off of recent projections. So we look forward to that and being a part of it. Next pitch, we have Huego Football CEO Mohamed Asif. Hi everyone, good morning, Asalaamu Alaikum. Hi, my name is Mohamed Asif. I am the CEO and co-founder of Huego Football. Play football locally and get scouted globally. This is the vision with which we created our product. We are trying to solve two main problems interconnected ones. Talented footballers go undiscovered because of lack of access to scouting resources and global scouts miss out on these talents because they don't have enough data on amateur footballers at grassroots level. We want to solve this problem and our solution, the Hoego Football App. With our application, a footballer can track his performance during his matches using his daily wearables and syncing it with our application and hence growing his footballer profile. All the footballer profiles on our application is shared with our partner academies and football clubs, giving them an opportunity to be scouted at a global level. We want to help the foot, uh, footballers get scouted based on their performance and cross every discrimination they face during these scouting resources. For scouts, we give them access to a scouting dashboard where they have access to the player profiles uh, categorized based on ratings and rankings in the application. And they also have access to detailed performance data of these players, helping them analyze the player, understand the player and decide to sign which kind of player they want to sign, which would suit best for their academies and clubs. The problem we are trying to solve is quite huge. There are more than 200 million amateur footballers globally. Out of this, our focus markets, the MENA and India, has more than 30 million amateur footballers, which accounts for 15 percentage of the total market share. And since the market is huge, we do have competition, but what gives us a competitive advantage are three things. Firstly, we do not require any extra hardware to track the performance of a player. We track it directly from your daily wearables like a Fitbit, like an iWatch, a Garmin, an MI band, etc. And we convert these data into soccer metrics and then provide it to the scouts. We are also laser focused on amateur footballers at grassroots levels, giving them opportunity to go professional. Our app is very incentivized and has a gamified experience, making it very easy for the footballers to track and grow their player profile. We have had great traction and partnership in Qatar and India so far. We have more than 2000 active users on our application. More than 1,700 games have been played using our application and we have partnership with more than 80 football clubs and three academies in both countries. We achieve this by both offline as well as online marketing campaigns with academies and football clubs and sports entities. And recently we signed a partnership with the AC Milan Youth Academy in India to be their official talent discovery partner. And we will be starting our competitions and analysis very soon with them. Our business model is very simple. It's a subscription-based business model. For the players, they have a subscription to access advanced features. For the scouts, they have a subscription model in the uh, scouting dashboard. And we also have ad revenue in the app. We have three new more upcoming revenue streams, which will be released in the coming months, namely ground booking, conducting football tournaments completely online, and a personalized training program for footballers who are planning to go professional. To build a very good product, we need a strong team. We are a team of six amazing founders, and uh, we have a combined experience of 22 years in the MENA and the Asian market. Me, myself, I have 11 years experience in the Middle East and Asian market in business development and uh, have also had four years experience in semi-professional football in India. We have raised angel investment in 2020 and the bootstrap angel investment of $45,000 were raised. Recently, we secured a fund of $40,000 US dollars from QST and QDB. We are looking to raise a fund of $250,000 uh, US dollars to accelerate our growth. The funds raised will be used over a time of 18 months for expanding the team, research and product development, and uh, entering more focused markets like Africa and South America, and also expanding in the markets we are already present in. We believe Hoego Football has the potential to change the scouting industry in a very positive manner, and we invite you to be part of the journey. Please get in touch with me uh, through email or uh, schedule a call with me through the Calendly link, which will be provided after the pitch. I'm looking forward to communicating with you, and thank you for your time. Thank you, Mohammed. Well done. 
Yes, the calendar link will be posted below. Please click it and choose the right time to meet with the Huego team. For now, we will send out the poll. Please take a few seconds to reply. Okay, question number nine. Which sports tech category gets the most funding in comparison to the rest of the categories? 30 seconds. So it was a very close race between esports and fans and content, but the right answer is fans and content. This was even pre COVID and now with COVID it's gone even higher. So esports is something that a lot of people want to get into and a lot of entities are trying to find a way into starting an esports program, but they really don't know where to start. And this is why it's being held back, but lots of growth for esports, but even bigger for fans and content. Okay, so our final pitch of today, definitely not the least, Sirdar for San Diego Sports. Hi, everybody. Uh, good morning uh, to all. I'm gonna present you today uh, uh, how artificial intelligence can help uh, for, uh, sports science to, for injury prevention. Uh, Sports is great. Uh, it's, it brings health both physically and mentally to the professional sp uh, athletes. But with, with busy match schedules are causing sever sever uh, severe injuries for the players and the athletes. Obviously, this is a health issue for for these young and young men and women. But it's also uh, a, a, there's a financial impact for the clubs. Worldwide, clubs pay more than 30 billion just for injuries, and in a single season. English Premier League clubs pays uh, close to $400 million uh, for the players that they are not even playing on the pitch. Uh, and on average, 50 Euro top European football clubs are spending, uh, are facing eight injuries during a season that cause the players are not on the pitch for more than 30 days. So obviously, uh, some of these injuries are caused by uh, direct hits, genetic factors, or some uh, random events. But 65% of these injuries are predicted. They caused by over or under training of the players, and they, they happen on the large muscles in the legs, uh, uh, like quadriceps, uh, calves, uh, 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 and the uh, hamstring muscles. We are building a solution to predict these injuries and then, then prevent these injuries. Our technology relies on three main technologies. Optical tracking, that we are um, uh, one of the pioneers of this real-time uh, real optical tracking. By putting cameras, we track the players, generate physical data. And this is in use for more than uh, seven years now in uh, five continents, more than 3,000 games. With optical tracking, we have, a, we have a certain level of prediction of the injuries. But with additional of uh, variable technologies, we ex uh, extract some intrinsic parameters from muscle group and individual players. And we, uh, we, we, are, we are seeing that we can predict the injuries much better uh, accuracy. And we, we, we went into the lab and we developed this EMG sensors. And these are in, on test in Turkey, England, and some other uh, national teams these days. And with bringing these two data sets and apply deep neural networks, we are helping the assistant coach and the medical staff to predict the injuries during the game and uh, develop uh, 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 training schedules. 
So we, deliver, we offer them three main value proposition. One is to prevent their injuries uh, by measuring the uh, asymmetry between the ma major uh, muscle groups. Second one, injuries can happen, but when they happen, uh, we are offering them a shorter recovery and return to play. It's much is, uh, faster than, than usual. And obviously, since we are tracking the physical metrics of the players, we are seeing a, a cumulative improvement of the strength and conditioning performance of the players. We will follow a beachhead strategy to attack a very huge market. We identify three main uh, and three identify, significant identifier markets, Turkey, Qatar and uh, England uh, for, as first uh, elite sports market penetration. Then we want to expand worldwide. And as a later stage, we want to democratize sports science for the academies and the prosumer markets. Obviously, we are not alone in this market. This is a very lucrative market, but we are differentiating with the, from our competition but by, by our focus and experience in the elite sports domain. So far, EMG sensors are tested in, uh, in biggest four, four largest Istanbul clubs. And we are getting uh, real-time feedback, uh, daily feedback from the from the users, and validating in the uh, FIFA Cent Medical Center of Excellence in Istanbul. And we are partnering with Bean Sports Turkey. Our business model is uh, uh, straightforward. It's a B2B business model and per-season subscription for optical tracking, including the operations and uh, EMG sensors are licensed per athlete basis, depending on the needs of the customers. The team behind Centio is an experienced computer scientist, uh, professors, and, and sports scientists. And we worked together for seven years on the optical uh, tracking domain and, and, and bringing technology into the sports world. So after spending last three years in the lab uh, to develop EMG sensors, so we are now in the uh, launch phase and we are in the uh, finance round for 800K. So far we, we raised uh, a half, slightly more than half of this amount from angel investors and venture capitalists and as founders. And we are, there's still room for uh, around 350K for new investors. And this proceedings will be used for improving the products and strengthening the team. We at Sentio, we want to democratize the use of data, all levels of sports. Many thanks for listening. And if you want to join us, you can uh, make an appointment with, directly with our panel link. Thank you. Thank you, Serdar. Yes, uh, injury prevention is a huge, huge market and has so much potential. So if you'd like to connect with Serdar, the calendar link has been pasted below. Please click on that and go directly to his calendar. For now, we will send the poll and I'll give you 30 seconds to reply. All right, so we have a final question for our quiz. And like I mentioned earlier, that we will announce the winner with the most correct answers on our social media platform. So the final question is, how many total startups does QSD have in their portfolio? I'll give you a few seconds. So the correct answer is actually none of the above. We have 47, so that was a typo, but we will give it to the people who replied with 45. With four cohorts of the accelerator program and one with the interlock, we have a total of 47 startups. 
So that concludes all the pitches, but please don't go just yet. Sit back. We do have some announcements. Um, and we also would like to go into our mentor announcement. So having 40 active mentors volunteering their time on a weekly basis, giving over 200 mentoring hours to support the startups with their expertise. I want to do a big, big thank you to the mentors. Thank you for your time and for your dedication that you put into the QSD program. We hope that it has been a fulfilling and rewarding experience for yourself. But like I mentioned, there is one mentor that stood out the most. This, this mentor has put in and mentored six of our startups and put in hours of mentoring to them. And this person is Sandy Zinn, the CEO of Zinn Sports Group LLC from New York City. Thank you, Sandy. We really appreciate you. The startups appreciate you. We have, you have put so much energy and time into our program and it really is such a, a nice experience to have you. So with that, we will reward you with the $500 gift card so for you to enjoy as you like. Thank you again very, very much. A very big good note is that Sandy is in New York City, so a huge time difference between him and the majority of the startups. So it has been, he has gone out of his way to make it work. So thank you once again. If you enjoyed the background music today, um, this has been by a QSD alum, Billy Mello from Life. Uh, you can go to their website that's on this uh, deck right here and you can get their, your music for your next event as well. So thank you, Billy. Thank you, the team at Life. Um, it's been very enjoyable with, with your noise. Uh, we do have a website for our demo day. So I want to invite you guys to go to our uh, direct website and from there you can go into our demo day website that will take you you can rewatch all the pitches you can share it with anybody else that you within your network uh, we pasted the link below in our chat uh, please uh, share it go there you can see all of our startups from all of the cohorts um, you can also go into their deal room or request access to their deal room and see their uh, executive summaries, their financial statements, et cetera, as well as book with their Calendly links through there. And now finally, we have Sheikh Ahmed Faleh Al Thani, a QST uh, colleague that will give our final remarks. So thank you all for spending your morning with me and until next time, be safe. Congratulations to our cohort for startup on their hard efforts and for the completing the accelerator program. We look forward to seeing your startup achievement in the future. And thank you to our partners and mentors and wide, wider sports tech community for supporting us on this initiative. And we wish you all the best. So if we can have all the startups going up here for a quick photo, let's take a group picture. There we go. Startups and QST. Now, buddy, there you are. So we have just a few more QST. Let's get your cameras on, guys. Don't be shy. There we go. So this is the virtual way of connecting. Picture at the end of the Zooms. 
Hussein, we're waiting for you and Adam. Uh, can we bring in Hamad? Um, so, man, can we bring in Hamad into the room, please? Yes, we do bring uh, Hamad and Mr. Ibrahim as well. Good, thank you. And then maybe if Tahani's in there as well. We try and bring in all the team members. Great. Hold your smiles. Ah, Raida. Yeah, let's try to bring in our partners too, if you can. We have John in there, and I think I saw several others. Um, I hope they're, re they're ready to turn on their cameras <laughs> as far as they are. Sure. Let's try. All right, partners, we forced you in here now. Like, like Salman said, I hope you're ready to turn on your camera. There you go. Hi, John, Dasan, Indika. You tell me when you're done, Salman and we can snap the photo. Yeah, we are, we are good to go. Uh, we have more people in, but I think their cameras are turned off. So the ones whose cameras are on uh, should be all on the screen. All right, so count down some men. Okay. Uh, just, sorry, we're just bringing one last person in. Give us a minute. If you're a partner or a mentor or part of the QST, just raise your hand and so we can see you. All right, um, I think we're good to go. Three, oh, smile. Three, two, one. You wanna keep looking? All right, one more. Three, two, one. All right, we're good. Right, let's have one with our thumbs up, ready? Three, two, one. Okay, we have two more people joining and so we have to do another one. <laughs> let's go, no problem. <laughs> Abdullah and Indika and Miguel just joined in. Hello everyone. So let's do this. One more time. Three, two, one, go. All right. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Heba. Thank you all. Thank you so much. Please feel free to unmute yourselves if we can all hear you all clap. Thank you, everyone. Thank you for all seeing. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Well done. Well done, Heba. Well done, Salman. So played. Well done, everybody. Salam from Sunny Island of Singapore. Salam. It was a complete team effort, the whole QSC team. We had worked really hard over the past uh, 12 weeks and, you know, even previous that. So thank you to the whole QSC team. Thank you to the startups. Thank you to the QDB team, uh, you know, for their big support. And thank you to all our partners. Thank you all. And mentors. And our mentors. mentors support. You guys rock. Thank, Thank you, you Salman. Thank you, Heba, all of you. Sarah, Jamuna. Going all on of you. Stay safe. MashaAllah, the effort that you guys put in. We really thank, thank you so much. Thanks, Arafin. Thank you to our attendees. Yeah, wherever well, I didn't mention Ryan. <laughs> yeah, Ryan and I. Who cares to forget somebody? <laughs> Who else? <laughs> 
Sarah, Jemana, uh, Ghaida. Yeah, I think I mean Adam. Adam, sorry. All right. Um, I think we're good. Thank you, everyone. Lastly. Yeah, thank you. Everyone, everyone. We'll be in touch. Thank yeah. you. Bye-bye. Have a good day. Good luck, everyone. Take care. Feel Bye. lonely. Bye, guys. Bye.